Hey, good Tuesday morning, my friends. I'm Live Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa here. I have a bunch of tabs open up for you on my browser. That means there's a lot of weather to get to. But first, a suggestion. I told my wife yesterday, I said, hey, we got two cool days coming up. Our freezer's full. We're getting a quarter of a cow. Let's cook a turkey that's in the freezer. So that's what's going on at the Torre Grossa household today. And today and tomorrow will be good days to cook something in the oven. You know, we got real hot and you said, oh, we got to go to all grilling, which that's not bad either. But now you can cook something if you want to. All right, let's get started here. Um, a lot of places in Michigan, most of Michigan has beautiful sunshine this morning. A couple little patches of clouds around the Traverse City, Cadillac area and up across the UP, but otherwise looking at sunshine locally across the state. Now, my headline says that Wednesday's rain is coming together for um, a little more widespread of rain. I wouldn't call it a, I wouldn't call it a heavy rain. I would call it a, a chilly soaker in some places, and I'll show you where. So you see the clouds out and through the central plains. That's the storm system that is heading this way for tomorrow and i emphasized this yesterday we're in a regular storm pattern now so we have a rain tomorrow we have another one late friday into saturday maybe sunday we'll watch that that's the storm system that you're looking at out in the central pacific now and you can see it's fairly well defined and then the models show another one middle of next week and you can kind of see the white clouds streaming in from the west on that one Hey, good morning to a few folks. Good morning, Holland, Susan Pendergrass. Been a while since my wife and I have been to Holland. We need to get there. Hey, good morning, Ackley, uh, Lisa Ackley from Charlotte. Uh, thank you. And uh, Cindy Grossman, yes, it was a little burr this morning in places. Lori Younglove, good morning to you and Flint as well. Okay, so let's get into tomorrow's rain. Today we have a a beautiful day. Um, you know, the clouds will wear off in places and we'll get back to sunshine. We go through the day. We'll call it a dry day today. And then we go into tonight. This is four, five, six in the morning tomorrow. The green on a radar forecast of this model is light rainfall. The yellow is um, steady, moderate rainfall. This is noon tomorrow. So yeah, Gaylord, Houghton Lake, Saginaw, maybe Flint, uh, down to Lansing, over to Grand Rapids. The solid rain right now looks like it runs from uh, about Grand Rapids to Flint, north to Mackinac Island. Southern part of the state, it's more showery, but as we go through the afternoon, this is 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and the showers still spotty hit and miss, occasional Detroit, Ann Arbor, Jackson, Kalamazoo southward, but north of that, solid rainfall. So, yeah, it's cook something in the oven type weather. Uh, Joanna in Goglia. I'm a Florida. I'm, a, I'm in Florida. So, hope the weather isn't too bad when I get back on Friday. It's straightening out. So, and then we get into Thursday, and Thursday looks like a dry day. So, the first point is. There's a rain coming for tomorrow. How much the best model that I could find for you on this uh, shows it like this. We'll call it a we'll call it a half inch to maybe an inch uh, for a swath across central lower Michigan. South of that, we'll call it uh, you know a quarter to a half inch, and north of it, a quarter to a half inch. So it's not a huge rain, but it's a chilly, steady rain in some places. Now get into the temperatures here today we're looking at uh oh let's call it upper 60s in the sunshine northern lower could be quite a bit cooler in the 50s now tomorrow with the clouds and the showers around everybody struggles to hit 60 degrees and a lot of central michigan saginaw bay city midland mount pleasant alma grand rapids big rapids you spend the day in the 50s and damp. Now, look at Thursday, back up to flirting with 80 degrees from Saginaw Bay City, southward through Lansing and into the southeast part of the state, lower 70s in the north. So Thursday's a nice day. Look at Friday, already in the southwest wind, already 
flirting with, if not breaking 90 degrees. Now, remember last time this model, uh, it did a great job. Seven, eight days out, it was forecasting 90 degrees plus. So we thought, Phew. in Traverse City, the warmest I saw it, uh, 96 degrees, only four degrees. Put this into perspective last week. Traverse City, 96, only four degrees from 100 in early May. Okay, so Friday is a hot one. Friday is a summery day. And then as the cold front comes through, a little cooler on Saturday, quite a bit cooler on Sunday. Uh, Monday in the low 60s, Tuesday of next week, upper 60s, Wednesday kind of cool. Thursday, and I'm going to show you that too. We've got kind of an extended weather update here. Thanks for joining me, by the way, on the MLive Morning Weather Update. I'm uh, MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa. Um, still a lot to get to if you want it. So hang in there with me and I'll show you what's going on. And we're going to start to look toward Memorial Day weekend. Why? Because we can. So this is 10 days out. And notice the heat building off to the southwest. I'll show that to you in a little more detail here in just a moment. Do we have to worry about any frost still? Yes, I think slightly, but not super concerned. And what I'm saying is to you is I think you should I think you should plant your garden. Soil is warm enough for most everything except for maybe cucumbers, watermelon, and squashes, okay? Um, but I think you should be prepared to have to cover the garden one time. And that would be in the thumb. That would be down in the strip that runs down to Lansing. And that would be of obviously up in the northern half of lower Michigan. Ann Arbor, Detroit area, you're probably pretty good. Kalamazoo area, you're pretty good. Southwest corner, you're pretty good. Grand Rapids, you're probably pretty good, especially if you live in the city. But uh, so, yeah, go for it, but still be a little bit uh, on the cautious side. Uh, okay, lows tomorrow morning will be in the upper 30s in the thumb, upper 30s in the north, frosty in the eastern UP. You're used to that, but otherwise in the 40s, no frost. And then Thursday, it's a little bit warmer, low in the 50s. Friday, it's a lot warmer as we head toward near 90 degrees in places. Saturday's warm. Sunday cools down a touch into the 40s. Monday, next Monday is the day that I'm targeting as our next chance of a light frost. You see 38 there in Cairo and Bad Axe. That means some spots can get to 35. That's an hour frost in the coldest spots. Uh, you see 40-ish uh, Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids, 40 Ann Arbor, Detroit. So that would not produce a frost. And then Tuesday, a little warmer. And then Wednesday, a little warmer than that. And Thursday also. Okay. Now, we're going to look, uh, let's see here, what do I want to show you here? Okay, this is a little bit closer to look at what's going on over the long term. So here's our Wednesday rain, okay? Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me. Janine Folkert, I've been hearing about severe weather on Friday. Would that be Friday evening? We will be near Port Huron. It would be Friday evening or Friday overnight. Um, we will just have to keep an eye on it because... You know, the, the the overall lookout in the distance set up is there. A warm, humid day, strong south-southwest winds, cold front coming through. But if it comes through at night, a lot of times those storms uh, really weaken here in Michigan. But we'll keep an eye on it for you. So this is what you're talking about right here. This is This model has actually slowed the front down. This would be Friday night, early... Friday overnight, we call it. And then this would be early Saturday morning. This would be Saturday afternoon and evening. So it kind of slows this down. Also the theory that the warmth is starting to take over over the cold because, you know, when the cold is dominant, the cold fronts race right on through. But as summer progresses, the cold fronts have a tougher time and they get stalled. So we're in the next Monday of next week. And then I showed you way out in the distance on the left side of the satellite picture, the next storm after that, and that comes through in the middle of next week. So we're kind of in a regular pattern. Now, when I end it, 
okay? What you have to look at, you got to kind of get comfortable with these weather maps with me, okay? What you're looking at the end, 10 days out, but you see a lot of red lines. That's the temperature at about 5,000 feet up. That's the engine for warmth at the ground. The wind hits and then it drives that warm air down to the ground. We call it mixing down. And so when we see that warm bubble out to the west, we know some hot air is coming. Now, indeed, this is 10 days out. That can vary. It could change. But this model has been very good to seven, eight days out. So we'll watch that for a couple of days. Point being is it looks like we would have a really warm spell as we come toward the Memorial Day weekend. So you see that setup right there. Okay. And now I go a little bit wider for you out at 10 days. I just want you to see if you look in Iowa, you look in Nebraska, you see a 24, a red line with a 24 on it. You see a red line with a 26. That's plus 24 degrees Celsius at 5,000 feet up. That turns into 95 to 100 degrees out there. And look at where it's pointed. I'm not saying that we would get to 100, but I'm just saying that there is a warm spell developing out there. And if you if you trust 10 days out, which we don't necessarily, then it would say that 11 and 12 days, which would be going into the Memorial Day weekend, we'd be looking at some hot weather. So just a preliminary, just a fun look at what we can do in meteorology now. And this is this is the high temperature forecast at that same time period, 10 days out, okay? Uh, that would be, uh, let's see, Thursday, May 26th. And you can see the heat building off to the west. So um, I guess one thing I want to emphasize is that, you know, we always get to late March and early April and we have a cold spell. And everybody just goes, oh, my gosh, summer is going to be a wreck here in Michigan. We're never going to take our sweaters off. It can change so fast. There's, We've found that there is no correlation to cold April, cold early May, and the rest of the summer. Um, you know, the, the record warmth we had last week took care of any delayed warming of the Great Lakes that happened in April. And what we have coming, we'll do the same thing. So right now, I guess we only thing we have to go on in the summer that is a, that is a sure bet is the 800-pound gorilla, that the globe is warming. And generally, summers should be warmer all the time. Not every summer, but if you average it out over time, uh, so did you get an up like update on weather like that from anybody today? I'm starting to lose people because probably starting to get a little weary and, oh, God, I've had enough weather. Ooh. All right, let's see what we have for questions. Uh, Karen Garza, looking like my boys soccer game on Saturday might be a washout in Eaton Rapids. It's pretty far out. It's It's possible. I mean, it's certainly something to... Keep an eye on on the progression here on the updates with you. Uh, Orchard is loving it. Oh, let's see. Oh, Corey Shelton, can you say hi to my eighth graders in Michigan Center? We're doing our weather unit watch. Hey, eighth graders at Michigan Center, good morning to you. And I will tell you that you know you got to get used to looking at all kinds of stuff like this in science. And uh, things like this, because science, you interpret data a lot. Nobody rarely in science comes to you and says, this is the answer. You're the scientist. You're trying to derive the answer. And we always just keep getting closer to the answers, but we don't have all of the answers. Whatever science you're going into, meteorology, physics, chemistry, medicine, anything like that, you're going to be deriving the answers off of abstract data. If you go in and become a doctor, you're going to look at, you're going to look at tests, you're going to look at x-rays, you're going to look at images, and you're going to say, I think you have this. So 
hey, I'll get off my soapbox now. Uh, let's see, Chad Douglas, weather in Muskegon Saturday, outdoor event all day. Please mark. All right, let's go back to uh, let's go back to Muskegon. Uh, bear with me a second here, Chad. Now bear in mind, still several days out. Okay, here we are. All right, this is the one that I would use for Saturday. Okay, we're at we're at Saturday morning. We're at Saturday. 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It would show some showers in Muskegon. You know, and this, this model can be a little bit slow, but I do believe that, you know, you probably better plan on some showers, uh, Muskegon on the very ver edge of it. Mike Mosier, good to hear. Weatherman acknowledging global warming, the aging part of me likes how every year I need a snowblower <laughs> less and less. Yes, that is certainly true. Hey, good morning, Billy Wilson and Frank Davis from Ex Essexville and Carol Nortley. Let's see, do we have any more questions? So hopefully that answers your question, Chad Douglas. Just keep an eye on it. This could shift. It would only have to shift 50 miles to the south and east for uh, Muskegon to have a dry day on Saturday. Boy, we're still got a strong crowd here. Thanks for joining me on the MLive morning weather update. Hopefully you got everything you need. What you should take out of this is cook something in the oven today or tomorrow. We're making a turkey. Oh, my wife makes some great turkey too. And um, then it looks like a rapid warm up into Friday, another cold front. So we're in kind of a, we're in kind of a, something for everybody type pattern. If you need a rain, it's about every three to five days. If you want some warm temperatures, a couple of days in there, if you want it to still be 60s-ish, uh, a little bit uh, of that in there for you. Diana Alexander, more frost for New Baltimore? Probably not from New Baltimore. You're pretty warm down in there. Any tips for upcoming camping trip? First week of June, Eastport near Torch Lake. Right now, the way we're trending, is you're going to be plenty warm and you're going to be plenty nice and we will have a patch of storms sometime in any week in june unless the storm track just goes dead so uh, just have yourself a, a plan on where to go in thunderstorms remember you're not supposed to be in a tent or i don't think even in a camper in a lightning storm you should get into your car it's a much safer place as the lightning moves on through there's your update I'm MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrosa. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye.